My name is Tracy Thomas. I'm a Youth Programs Coordinator here at the Louisville Free Public Library. I want to welcome you. This is an exciting event, uh, a partnership with Carmichael's Kids. Uh, we've had a great time partnering with them since Harry Potter in the summer. Was anybody here for Harry Potter? Yeah, I see some hands. Little secret, we're going to do PotterCon next July. Be watching for it. Uh, so we're very excited about tonight. Uh, do you all know who this guy is up here? Who is that? Bad Kitty. Do you know who wrote Bad Kitty? You all are awesome. Well, Nick Brule lives in Briarcliff, New York with his wife and daughter. And he has written a lot of books. But do you know what he used to do? He used to sell books. And then because he has a quirky sense of humor, we love that around here, and he loves to draw, he started writing books. Does anybody like to write and draw pictures? Wouldn't that be cool if you grew up and drew and wrote children's books and drew pictures? That would be really cool. And you could put them here at the library. So we are going to let Nick come out. Apparently in his, in his past, in his time off of writing, he likes to collect Pez dispensers. Isn't that a fun hobby? And he grows tomatoes. But he told me this wasn't a good year for tomatoes in New York. Well, are you ready to hear him speak? Okay, well, give Nick a big hand. Thank you. Take that, Mo Willems. This is lovely. What a special occasion this is for me. I don't take stuff like this for granted by any means. Um, I want to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you from the newest Bad Kitty picture book, this one here, Bad Kitty Scaredy Cat. And then I'm going to do a little drawing, and then I want to open the floors up to as many questions as we can possibly fit in before bedtime, yours and mine. Uh, so, and, and to do that, by the way, there are microphones that they have set up for me on either side of the aisle. You can see them right below the thermostats, and that is where I will direct you when it's time for questions. I'll try to get as many, to as many of them as possible. Um, but before we do that, I want to give you a little background as to why this book exists. This is actually just the fourth Bad Kitty picture book. I have all, almost ten, I have nine chapter books out right now, but this is only the fourth picture book. Now, the very first Bad Kitty picture book was also the very first Bad Kitty book overall. It was just simply called Bad Kitty. And, and if you don't know it, that's fine. It's a really simple story. It's, it's a story about a cat who does not get the food she wants in alphabetical order. So she commits these random acts of mayhem in alphabetical order. Then she does get the food that she wants in alphabetical order, and she more or less makes amends in alphabetical order. Now, when this book came out, Bad Kitty, it did pretty well. You know, kids liked it, my publishers liked it, and you know, for, for, for some of you who may not know what a publisher is, I'm just going to explain it briefly. A pub, all I do is I write the words and I draw the pictures. The publisher is the company that takes my words and pictures and, and turns them into books that they sell at bookstores like Carmichael's and, and, and uh, you, where you can take them out of the library like this one here. So anyway, my publisher uh, called me in one day and they said, hey, Nick Brule, we like this Bad Kitty book. We think you should do another Bad Kitty book. And I said, I don't want to do another Bad Kitty book. And they said, how come you don't want to do another Bad Kitty book? And I said, because Bad Kitty goes through the alphabet four times. It is not as easy as it looks to find the right word for every letter of the alphabet, especially if you have to do it four times. So I said to my publisher, I, Nick Brule, will never do another Bad Kitty book again. And they said, go home, think about it. That's what I did. Funny thing happened when I got home. My, my wife had a friend who was visiting. And my wife's friend had a little boy who was only about two, maybe three years old at the most. And when this little guy would toddle about the house, sometimes he'd trip and he'd fall and, and he'd get upset. And my wife's friend would pick him up and console him by rocking him back and forth in her arms, saying, poor puppy, poor puppy, poor, poor puppy. That rang a bell in my head. It made me think, you know what, maybe I could do another Bad Kitty book, but it wouldn't be about just Kitty. It would be about that dog living in that house with that cat, and I would call it poor puppy. 
So that's what I did. It goes through the alphabet three more times. And it came out, and my publisher liked it, and the kids liked it. And my publisher called me, and they said, hey, Nick Brewer, we like this bad kitty book. We like this poor puppy book. We think you should do another bad kitty book. And I said, I don't want to do another bad kitty book. And they said, how come you don't want to do another bad kitty book? And I said, because bad kitty goes through the alphabet four times. Poor puppy, three times. That's seven alphabets. I'm all out of alphabets. I, Nick Brule, will never do another bad kitty book again. <laughs> and they said, go home, think about it. That's what I did. That's when it occurred to me, the problem isn't with kitty. The problem's not with puppy. The problem is those accursed alphabets. What if I made a whole series of books for older kids? They'd be chapter books. They could be as long as 160 pages, and it could tell much more detailed and fleshed out stories, and most importantly, they would have none of those alphabets. I like this idea. My publisher liked this idea. We started putting them out. The first one was Bad Kitty Gets a Bath, and then Bad, uh, Happy Birthday Bad Kitty, and then Bad Kitty versus Uncle Murray, and so on and so forth. They came out. My publisher liked them. My kids liked them. The kids liked them. They called me into the office. They said, hey, Nick, bro, we like these chapter books, but we still want you to do another Bad Kitty picture book. And I said, I don't want it. Alphabets, I, Nick, bro, will never do another Bad Kitty book again. And they said, go home and think about it. <laughs> so, of course, I thought about it. And maybe it was a time of year that, that this all happened. Um, but it occurred to me that I like... Christmas. Christmas is kind of cool, right? I mean, Christmas is this day that's not even your birthday when people give you presents. And I like presents, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not just from your friends and your family, but Santa, these people give you presents. And so I thought maybe I could do a Bad Kitty book about Kitty and Christmas and presents. And because I am my own worst enemy, I could have it go through the alphabet five times and make it rhyme. <laughs> so that's what I did. A Bad Kitty Christmas came out, and um, it did pretty well. My publisher liked it, the kids liked it, my publisher called me in. And they said, you're not gonna like what we're gonna ask you to do. And I said, I know what you're gonna ask me. And they said, yeah, we, Nick Rill, we, we still want you to do another Bad Kitty picture book. And I said to them, there is no way, there is nothing you can do or say that could ever compel me to ever do another Bad Kitty picture book again. And they said to me, go home and that's what I did. That's when it occurred to me. I like Christmas, but I love Halloween because I like presents, but I love candy. <laughs> I'm going to tell the kids in this audience something that's going to get me into a lot of trouble, but it has to be said. When you become a grown-up, when you are all grown up and you finished high school and you finished college and, 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 and maybe you're out living on your own, you've got a job because you're all grown up and you're an adult, you can eat candy whenever you want. <laughs> I'm still not over it. It's a little something for all of you to look forward to. So I thought maybe I could do another book. Maybe I had one more book left in me that could be about Kitty and Halloween and candy. And that is what I'm going to read to you now. Now, on the very first page of this book, we see Kitty sleeping peacefully amidst 
the chaos and destruction she has wrought. But when we turn the page, Puppy has come into the room, and the story begins. She wasn't always a scaredy cat. Woof! She used to be A, an angry kitty. B, a brave kitty. C, a clumsy kitty. D, a daring kitty. An energetic kitty. A fearless kitty. <laughs> a gallant kitty. A heroic kitty. Bomp. An inept kitty. A jumbled kitty. A kittenish kitty. Mew. A loopy kitty. Honk. A muddled kitty. Woof. <laughs> a numb kitty. An outraged kitty. A powerful kitty. A quick kitty. A resolute kitty. A strong kitty. A tough kitty. An upended kitty. A vexed kitty. A wet kitty. An exasperated kitty. A youthful kitty and a zestful kitty. But then, one dark and foggy night, something terrible happened. Ding dong. Out of the darkness and into her doorway appeared the most horrible and frightening creatures Kitty had ever seen. Trick or treat. She saw A, an awful alien. B, a bizarre Bigfoot. C, a creepy clown. D, a dreadful dragon. Does Kitty look happy? <laughs> Evil ectoplasm. A frightful Frankenstein. A ghastly goblin. A hideous hag. Does Kitty look happy? <laughs> An intimidating invisible man. A jarring jack-o'-lantern. A killer kraken. A loathsome lion. Does Kitty look happy? <laughs> a monstrous mummy, a noisy Neanderthal, an odious ogre, a putrid pirate. Does Kitty look happy? <laughs> a quirky Quasimodo, a rusty robot, a scary skeleton, a toxic tarantula. Does Kitty look happy? <laughs> Uncle Murray! <laughs> Hi, I ran out of candy. Can I borrow some? A vile vampire, a wicked werewolf, an extremely exotic x-ray creature. Does Kitty look happy? A yucky yeti and a zany zombie. That's how she became a scaredy cat. That's how she became just a very, very scared, scared, scared little kitty. Poor kitty. Poor, poor kitty. She's gone! But then... Oops! I dropped my candy. That's when she saw it. She saw A. Apples. B. Bubble gum. C. Candy corn. D. Dried fruit. English toffee fudge, gumdrops, hard candy, Italian truffles, jelly beans, kiwi fruit, lollipops, marshmallows, necklaces, oranges, pretzels, quince candy, raisins, strawberry licorice, taffy, unsalted nuts, vanilla cookies, white chocolate, wax lips, yellow bananas, and zoo animal crackers. Does Kitty look happy now? <laughs> Kitty decided there and then that she would not be a scared little kitty anymore. She decided she would be a... Bad kitty! But not just any bad kitty. She would be a very, very bad, bad, bad kitty. She, A, attacked the alien. B, battered Bigfoot. C, clobbered the clown. Demolished the dragon, eradicated the ectoplasm, flattened Frankenstein, gnawed on the goblin, harassed the hag, injured the invisible man, jostled the jack-o'-lantern, kicked the kraken, lambasted the lion, mauled the mummy, nullified the Neanderthal, overturned the ogre, Pinched the pirate, 
quashed Quasimodo, ruined the robot, smashed the skeleton, tackled the tarantula, upset Uncle Murray, <laughs> vanquished the vampire, whacked the werewolf, extinguished the x-ray creature, yanked the yeti, and zinged the zombie. Hooray for Kitty! All by herself, Kitty managed to chase those horrible creatures back out into the night. Kitty decided there and then that she would never be a scaredy cat again. Okay. Never. Woof! <laughs> never. The end. Thank you. Thought I'd do a little drawing. But here's the thing. I promised myself when I came here, I didn't want to be just the guy who came into this library, got this big, beautiful crowd of people, and then got this lovely sheet of paper and a marker out and then said to you, all right, people, this is how you draw a bad kid. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't exactly be productive. I mean, the most you would learn is how I draw cats, and not even how you would draw your own cats. It's kind of like learning how to sing by watching American Idol. Totally amusing, totally entertaining, but not exactly educationally relevant. So this is what I'm going to do. Just to kind of make it more interesting, I am going to draw a kitty. Yes! But in doing so, I am going to show you the hardest part. I'm going to show you the biggest challenge I face each and every single time when I have to draw this character. Yes! And that is giving her emotions, feelings. Yes! Because I write stories. And, and emotions and feelings are really important in stories. Every character and every story you've ever read, you're ever going to read, they all needed emotions and feelings to seem real. But I've got a problem. It's kind of a big problem. My problem is that I created a character who does not talk. Kitty does not talk. So that means she can't just tell you what she's thinking. She can't just tell you what she's feeling. The only way to know what Kitty is thinking or what she's feeling is by seeing the expressions on her face. That's my challenge. And I'm going to show you how I approach this problem each and every single day. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to draw Kitty herself. So, now, when I'm drawing Kitty, I always start in the middle of her face with that part of the body called the... Elbow. elbow. Wait, who said nose? You're right. I'm sorry. Now, below her nose, I draw her mouth. Above her nose, I'm going to draw these two circles, which are going to be her ah! gallbladder. Wait, who said eyes? You were right. I'm sorry. I draw these four hairy deals up top. My research shows that all cats have two ears. So I always give her two ears. These whiskery deals. Now, the middle whisker is always a little longer than the other two. It bounces her head a little bit. Skinny neck, shoulders, tuft of hair and chest, and there's Kitty. Hi, Kitty. But I'm not done. No, 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 no. You know, because I'm not done yet. See, because I call that blank face Kitty. Because she doesn't really have an expression there yet. You know, you, can, you can't look at that face and know for sure what she's thinking. You certainly can't look at that face and know for sure what she's feeling. That is about to change. Because with a single stroke of this marker, I'm going to turn this blank face kitty, I'm going to turn this expressionless kitty into annoyed kitty. This is going to happen quickly, so pay attention. Here we go. No expression. Annoyed. In case you missed it the first time, no expression. Annoyed. No expression. Annoyed. Annoyed. These little details can make a big difference in knowing where to put those details. That's the hard part. 
to, to further illustrate this point, literally, I'm going to do this three more times. Now, to save time, I'm not going to draw her whole head with the ears and the whiskers, the elbow, the gallbladder. I'm, I'm just going to draw the important parts of her face, but I think I'm going to make her eyes just a little bit bigger. And do this three times. How's the back of my head looking this evening? You would be amazed the responses I get. All right, here we go. I've got three kitty faces there. They're pretty much identical. They're pretty much the same. But clearly they're incomplete. I haven't finished yet. By the time I'm done, this first one is going to be surprised kitty. This next one is going to be crazy kitty. And this last one is going to be adorable kitty. Thank you. So first things first, surprised kitty. One, two. It's easy, right? But check it out. All I did two dots and look at how much more alive that face becomes compared to the other two. It's kind of cool, right? All right, next. Crazy kitty. One, two. It's not so hard. Last but not least, adorable kitty. One, two. I had three kitty faces. They used to be the same. They used to be pretty much identical. By the time I was done, the only difference between surprised, crazy, and adorable was where I put the dots for her eyes and how big I made them. These little details, the ones that make such a big difference, it took me a long time to figure out. It took a lot of practice. Still, to this day, remains the hardest part of my job when I'm creating this character. I would now like to open the floors to questions. Again, there are these microphones on the other side of me. That'll help me to hear. That'll help everybody else to hear. I just turned, I turned 50 this year. That means I'm in a state of slow decay. And so I will not be able to hear you unless you use those microphones. So we're gonna, I don't think anyone's gonna please them. So whoever's first, help yourself. Use the microphone and ask me that question. We're going to go that, that side, then this side. We're going to go back and forth that way, all right? So that'll at least create some semblance of order. What's what is your, your favorite candy? What is my favorite candy? I like uh, licorice. So good and plenty kind of stands out as being my favorite candy. But even more than good and plenty, because I'm such a connoisseur, in the Netherlands, there's this unique candy called chalk. They're like big, thick, good and plenties, but the licorice is even richer. And they look like little pieces of chalk, and that's why they're called that. So thank you. On this side, what is your question? How many more Bad Kitty books are you going to write? I don't know how many more books, Bad Kitty books, I am going to make. I can tell you that there will be at least two more because I've already finished the next Bad Kitty book, the one that comes out in January. Um, so the next Bad Kitty chapter book comes out something like January 3rd or 4th, just in time for two weeks after Christmas. And, and that book will be called Bad Kitty Takes the Test. Now, I visit lots of schools. I've been to schools in Kentucky, of course. I've been to schools in New York, where I'm from. New Jersey, Connecticut, Florida, Texas, California, Washington. I've been to about two-thirds or three-quarters of the states in this country. And I can report to all of you kids here tonight that every kid in every school, in every district, in every state in this country is facing the exact same problems that you are. You're all getting tested like nuts. You're getting tested so much that I think it's not only silly, I think it's the, the appropriate word is counterproductive. 
Because you're, you're, you're spending all this time taking tests, you're not actually getting enough time to learn all the critical stuff you're going to need later on in life. I thought it was time for Kitty to take a stand on this issue. After that, the book I'm working on right now, Bad Kitty Camp Days. And after that, I don't know. I don't know how many more books I, I'm going to do. I can tell you this much. If, you ever, if I ever stop making Bad Kitty books, it's going to be because it stopped being fun for me. So far, there's no risk of that. So far, I'm still having fun. And so even though I might take a small hiatus in the future, it won't be so long that I would ever stop for good. All right, back to this side. What's your question for me? How did you get the idea of cat? I think I gave you an example of how my brain thinks earlier. I told you about how I heard the, the, the title, Poor Puppy, and made me think that could be a book. Believe it or not, that's how my brain works for almost all of my books. For Bad Kitty 2. About 15 years ago, I was sitting at my desk. I had a big blank sheet of paper in front of me, and I had a pen in my hand. And rather than writing a story, I thought, okay, I'm just going to write down titles. Titles I'd never seen before. Titles I didn't think existed, so that's what I did. I started writing them down as they came to me. Title after title after title. And after a while, I wrote down some titles that I kind of liked. I wrote down some titles that I kind of didn't like. But then I wrote down this one title that I really liked, and that title was... I like that title a lot. I asked myself questions. If I have a story called Bad Kitty, it's about a kitty being bad, what does she do that's so bad? I came up with so many ideas, I thought it would be interesting if I put them in alphabetical order. And I asked myself the question, okay, why would she do all these terrible things? And I realized, you know, cats and food are pretty, you know, connected. I thought, maybe I'll do an alphabet of foods she does not like. And that is how that first book took shape. Terrific. This side, yes. Do you actually have a cat? If you asked me that question about a year and a half ago, I would have said, yes, I have one cat. But now I have two cats. <laughs> and a dog. And, and, and it's kind of interesting to watch these three interact. The old cat hates the new cat. The old cat wants to eat the new cat. The new cat is too much of a dope to realize that the old cat wants to eat her because the, old, the new cat is constantly antagonizing the old cat by wandering into the little bathroom where the old cat has her litter box and her food bowl. It would be like walking through the doorway of Castle Dracula knowing that the place is infested with vampires. This is what the new cat keeps doing over and over again. She keeps getting chased and, 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 and scratched. The dog is above it all. The dog could not care less. The old cat hates the dog. The dog doesn't even give her any notice. Watching the dog and the new cat, that's been interesting. Because about once every two days, the dog and the new cat really, really, really want to play. Is everyone OK there? Can someone give her a hug? Thank you. About once every two days, the dog and the new cat try to play. The only problem is they can't agree on what game to play. Because the dog wants to play his favorite game, which is called Bitey Bitey Wrestle. He tries, and the cat gets freaked out and says, no, cut it out. No, whatever that is, stop it. You know, the, the, the cat wants to play her favorite game, which is swatty, swatty. <laughs> the, the, the dog doesn't, you know, it's very, no, please, no, eyes, that could hurt, no. So the, every, once every two days, they get together, they meet, they run into each other. It's bitey, bitey, wrestle, swatty, swatty. They get freaked out, they go their separate ways, and they just keep trying. Your question right here. How do you make a scared cat face? I know exactly how to do it because this, this is pretty much going to mimic the sloppy doodle I'm going to do in any, in, inside the book of any kid who buys um, Bad Kitty Scaredy Cat. Uh, again, I always start in the middle of the face with the gallbladder because um, the size of the nose is going to determine the size of the, the, the head overall. 
But this is where I get, I do this. So I do the mouth, but I don't do the bottom part because I want Kitty to look really shocked. There's her tongue even. And I'm gonna make her eyes really big. And, and here's where I get to be a little more creative because I get to do a little bit more. You know, when you get really scared, your hair stands up. I'm gonna do the same thing with Kitty's hair. And I'm gonna make her ears maybe a little bit pointed. And, and she's, so stuck, she's so freaked out that even, even her, what, did, did everybody notice that? It was it's just me. <laughs> all right, good. I mean, the whiskers get all crazy. There's her, and that's what, scared, that's what a scared cat looks like. Uh, this side, what's your question? What's your favorite book that you made? It's a terrific question, and you are not the first person to have asked me that question. The, the, the problem is I do not have a very satisfying answer for you because I do not have a favorite book of, of, that I've made. I, I can at least tell you why, why I don't have a favorite book. I, I think of the question as being a lot like this. It's a lot like what would happen if you went up to somebody who has lots and lots of kids. And you ask that person, of all your children, which one is your favorite child? That person would say to you, I do not have a favorite child. They are all special and unique to me for different reasons. They come to me with special and unique joys, special and unique challenges, and that is how I feel about my books. Thank you. Right here. What Decide now. What's your question for me? Are you going to give out any autographs when you're done with this? Yes. When, when we're done with all of this, this, this nonsense, I will be sitting at a table uh, just outside those doors signing books. That, that, is, that is the plan. I, 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 that is part of the fun for me, to be able to sign books. I don't, it's when people don't want me to sign books, I know I'll be in trouble. Right there. What's your question now? What's your favorite part? What's my favorite part of, of making these books? You know, honestly, it's stuff like this. This is kind of um, special. Yeah, I get to do something that, that writers and authors of adult genre books don't do so often. I get to visit schools and libraries pretty regularly to talk and meet my readers. And, and I can visit a school and I could meet literally thousands of my readers during the course of a week. And that's not something that adult genre authors can do, and I, I don't take this for granted. Thank you. What's your question? Um, how did you create Puppy? How did I create Puppy? Well, honestly, you know, we see Puppy for the very first time at the very end of the first Bad Kitty book. And, and, and uh, I'll tell you why Puppy's there, because, you know, the story is, you know, I, I, I could have ended the first Bad Kitty book, and now she was a very, very good, good kitty. The end. And it, and it would not have been very satisfying. I needed a way to make her bad again. The only problem is that the thing that made her bad in the first place was she didn't get the food she wanted. But now she did have all the food she wanted. What's the one thing that can make her bad again? And it turned out, I, the decision I made was putting a dog into her world. That dog, thank goodness, I, that dog is really important to the world of Bad Kitty. The only character other than Kitty her, herself to appear in every single Bad Kitty book is Puppy. That's how important that character became to me when I did that. Yes? Is Uncle Murray a real, a real person? I love that you asked that question. This is the perfect season for me to answer that question. And, and, and this, why I said that is going to make sense in a moment. Uncle Murray exists. Again, because in Bad Kitty, I was going through this alphabet, and I got this alphabet of foods that Kitty, foods and animals that Kitty wants to eat. And, and I got to the letter U, and I couldn't think of a food or an animal that started with the letter U. I mean, there are unicorns, but they don't exist. Sorry, girls. And, and so I thought it just wouldn't fit. Then I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I did Uncle Somebody? If I was going to do Uncle Anybody at all, it had to be my own real-life Uncle Murray. Because when I was a kid your age, I had my own real-life Uncle Murray. And, and I depict him as I remember him. He was kind of big and doughy and going bald. And I'd visit him at home, so he's always walking around in a sort of stained gray t-shirt and his pajama pants. My Uncle Murray. 
He used to tell me all sorts of stories that were probably inappropriate for my age <laughs> about his friendship with a famous Hollywood comedy team called Abbott and Costello. You younger folk may not. So this is everyone's assignment. Halloween's coming. That means an amazing movie is going to be on air at some point somewhere. It's, maybe it'll be on Turner Classic Movies. I don't know. Maybe it's already streaming on YouTube. I don't know. Somebody is going to show a movie called Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. And when you s see this movie, when you are watching that film, you can point to the screen and you can say, hey, those two guys used to play poker every Thursday night with the real life Uncle Murray. I have two questions. Okay. The first one is, did you have permission to do the, the books? And, and what's your second question? The second question is, was it hard to write and draw? Was it hard to write and to draw? Interesting. All right, well, the first question is, did I have permission to make my books? Loosely, no. Not really. You know, I, I made my books because um, I just enjoyed writing stories. It's something I've enjoyed since I was a kid. I've been writing stories since... I was probably younger than you. And, and I did it because it was so much fun. And, and was it hard? You know what? I'm going to turn the question around to all the other kids. I want, all, all, I want everybody in this room to, to, to think about this for a moment. Raise your hand if you have ever written a book or a story yourself. Raise your hand if you've ever done that. OK. Put them down again. Uh, raise your hand if it was, like me, fun to write that book or that story of your own. Excellent. Put them down again. Now raise your hand if it was hard work to write that book, that story of your own. Excellent. There's your answer. As everyone here just demonstrated for you, something can be hard work and fun at the same time. So yeah, that's what it's like for me. I get up every morning and I struggle with every breath down the stairs to my office where I sit and I write and I illustrate books for kids like you. It is always hard work. It is always challenging. It is honestly sometimes even frustrating, but it's always really, really fun at the same time. I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't. Are we, are we getting to the point where I should wrap it up, or? I could do this all night, but, I, but everybody has got a bedtime. What's your question? What is your favorite food? You know what? In a general sense, I, I really like Chinese food. It may or may not be obvious from my facial features, but I am actually half Chinese, and so my belly has a Chinese palate. I, since I was a kid, I love Chinese food. I'd never really get tired of it. Of the Chinese food, there's a, there's a dish that you don't see often served called duck chow fun. That you only, I, even in where I in, grew up in New York, you only seen a few restaurants in Chinatown. I think maybe you get the last question. Is that correct? I'm sorry. I know everybody's online, but we're, we're, I'm going to have to sign all these books um, right afterwards. Yes? What was your first Bad Kitty book? The first Bad Kitty book was just the picture book, Bad Kitty. But the important thing to note is that when I made it, I didn't think of it as being the first Bad Kitty book. I thought of it as being the only Bad Kitty book. I had no idea back then that over time, kids like you would embrace these books and this character so much. I had no idea back then that not only would I make picture books about this character, but that, that I would make chapter books about this character. I had no idea back then that there would be dolls of the character. I had no idea back then there would be a great big costume with a mascot and people inside it. I had no idea back then that 13 million Bad Kitty books would be printed. I had no clue. I didn't think of it as being the first. I thought it was being the only. Thank goodness I moved on and made more Bad Kitty books and there will be more to come. Thank you all very very much.